In our ongoing studies of Chapter 19, The Regulation of Mammalian Fuel Metabolism, the subject for this lesson is metabolic circuits. Recall from our last lesson we learned that different organs utilize different metabolic pathways under different conditions, and therefore metabolites are continually being delivered to and from organs, and for this we need a circulatory system. For instance, the liver will produce glucose, and that needs to travel via the hepatic vein to other tissues for fuel use. Amino acids travel to the liver via the hepatic artery for amine disposal. So these metabolite circuits may actually be part of a larger metabolic pathway, as we'll see. This is necessary because not all organs and tissues have the means to utilize every metabolic pathway. Substrates may come from one organ or tissue and the end products may need to be delivered to a different organ or tissue. Let's look at one of these cycles. It's called the Cori cycle, named after Carl and Gertie Cori. In this cycle we begin with the muscle in our figure on the far right. It's going to break down glycogen to produce glucose during periods of high activity and it will utilize the pathway of glycolysis to convert that to pyruvate and that will be its energy source to produce ATP. Rapid catabolism generates NADH through glycolysis faster than it can be oxidized by mitochondria and therefore the muscle will reoxidize NADH by reducing pyruvate to lactate. The lactate produced by the muscle then travels to the liver. The liver will easily convert that back to pyruvate and remember the liver can carry out gluconeogenesis and so it will take the pyruvate and convert that via gluconeogenesis back to glucose. Now remember this is an anabolic pathway and so the energy to carry out gluconeogenesis, the ATP needed, comes from the oxidation of fatty acids. The glucose produced by the liver then travels back to the muscle for its continued use so that the muscle can continue its high level of activity. Notice the difference between the two pathways. The muscle uses glucose to generate lactate. The liver starts with lactate to make glucose. The difference is in the disposition of the energy or ATP. So the net effect is a transfer of energy from the liver to the muscle. The muscle gains the energy and the liver provides it via the glucose. The next cycle is the glucose alanine cycle and this also is another link between liver and muscle. And that's illustrated in our figure here. In this case, muscle protein breaks down under vigorous exercise and amino acids are deaminated and produce citric acid cycle intermediates. Here we have pyruvate produced by glycolysis and that's transaminated to form the amino acid alanine. Alanine then travels to the liver and the liver deaminates that through the urea cycle to produce pyruvate and then it uses pyruvate through gluconeogenesis to produce glucose which travels back to the muscle. So in this case also we start with gl glucose and with pyruvate that's converted to alanine. In the liver it begins with alanine to produce pyruvate and from that glucose. The difference is in the disposition of amine groups. The amine donors are coming from the muscle and they're being disposed of in the liver. So the net effect is the transport of nitrogen through these amine groups from the muscles to the liver. In our next video listen, we'll look at the signals that result in insulin release and we'll start to look at hormonal control of metabolism.